Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! We celebrate on this resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ's day that we know the gift of life, that Jesus has been raised from the dead, that we each have new life. I stand near the whole salvation story where Jesus teaches, is crucified, is buried, and the tomb is rolled away, the stone, to show us that we have eternal life. May each of us know this gift of life each and every day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. sins were paid and our salvation won, but the cost was the very life of Jesus Christ. Christ suffered and died, and darkness and silence covered the world. But darkness could not overcome the light. Death could not conquer our Lord. On the third day, Christ rose from the grave. Christ's life and glory and presence filled the world and filled our very lives. Our hearts fill with joy and our voices fill with praise. Jesus Christ lives. Hallelujah. It is Easter Sunday and the tomb is empty. So we come to proclaim together, Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia! Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia! Praise be to God.
continue on page four with the Easter reading. Holy people of God, given new life through the gospel of Christ and enlightened by the Spirit, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all and, and also, also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, who gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live in him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message sped, spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
proclaim to you, which you in turn receive, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been, put, been in vain. On the contrary, I work harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. She saw that the stone had been rolled from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrapped up, but rolled up instead in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside of the tomb. As she went, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, 
which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Resurrection Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. My friends, it's good for us to be here this day on this Easter day. I brought to you Waiting for Wings by Lois A. Lert. Lois wrote this book when I was first pastor at Zion Lutheran Church, and I read this at our Easter egg hunt, and it was wonderful. It made me go, that's what the resurrection is about, waiting for wings. Out in the fields, eggs are hidden from view, clinging to leaves with butterfly glue. Soon, caterpillars hatch. They creep and chew. Each one knows what it must do. Find a place where winds don't really blow. Then make a case in which to grow. Caterpillar changes now begin. Body and wings take shape within. When it's time, each case is torn. Wings unfold, new butterflies are born. They pump their wings, get ready to fly. Boys and girls, we get ready to fly because Jesus has given us life. Jesus was just like the caterpillar who, though a uh, difference is the caterpillar never died in the sense of completely dying. It was a living organism the whole time. Whereas Jesus died, though, and when he was raised, bodily raised from the dead, his body was resurrected to give life, eternal life. That's the promise that we have. The flowers back behind me, well, they're just bursting, getting ready to bloom. They're, they're as green as can be, some of them, but others, they're starting one at a time to show, little by little, when I first saw all of these flowers, I would say 95% of them were completely green. But in just a couple days, we've seen a change. In just one act of love, God has changed your life. And my friends, I hope you know that we have wings that we are given so that we can fly in life. Not literal wings, of course, but we can accomplish a lot of things because of God's grace, forgiveness, and love. Let us pray. Dear God, help us always to trust in you and celebrate the new life we have in you. Amen. See you next week. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In today's Gospel from John, we witness and see that Mary comes early in the morning, way before the sun is rising. And Mary shows up all by herself. It's a way of John trying to express that Mary is all in this alone, that her time of solitude, her time of sadness is great. That 
Mary is in mourning, that Mary is grieving, Mary is in pain. When she sees an open tomb, it does not bring about the memories of Lazarus' resurrection, a time where Lazarus was brought back to life. No, it brings fear, a fear that the tomb was raided, a fear that the tomb was robbed, or tomb robbery was very common. In fact, it was listed as a heinous crime during Mary and Jesus' day. Rather than looking into the tomb, though, Mary runs away from it, assuming that Jesus' body has been stolen. She seeks help from two disciples, Peter and the beloved disciples. Peter's inclusion seems rather odd. Does Mary or anyone know what Peter did in the courtyard? The last time we saw Peter, he was denying Jesus three times. He even swore an oath that he did not know Jesus. In contrast, though, we see the beloved disciple standing right at the cross beside Jesus to the very end. These disciples race to the tomb, the three of them together. Their presence kind of shows what's going to happen. Peter's future reinstatement, Jesus' gracious forgiveness. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, there is room for both faithful and failing disciples in the family of God because of the forgiveness and love so freely given by our good and gracious God. Mary's desire for comfort from these two disciples, however, will leave her empty. Both men will eventually look into the tomb and make their way just back at home. So the three disciples are now scattered again, the two men each going to their own home, and Mary left there alone, outside the tomb, weeping. In fact, given the sequence of events, it seems probable that the beloved disciple believed Mary's report of Jesus' body being stolen rather than being one that was resurrected. Since in verse 9 we read, For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. If the beloved disciple believed in the resurrection at this point, the story in John's gospel does not support it at all. So once again, we see Mary is alone at the tomb. We can imagine life has begun filtering into the garden around her. Her sorrow brings to mind Jesus' final words to his disciples. Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice. You will have pain, but it will turn into joy. The world will rejoice, but you will remain in pain. But your pain will turn into joy. To emphasize this point, Jesus uses the imagery of a woman in childbirth to describe his disciples' sorrow. Like a new mother holding her child, they will also rejoice. And Jesus says, no one will take your joy away. Yes. Mary is weeping. Mary is crouched down by the tomb. Mary is sorrowful. But soon she will experience the new beginnings of unending joy. They just haven't quite come to her yet. In contrast to the silence Mary received from the pleading disciples, who ran to the tomb only later to abandon her there. Mary is now visited by three different beings. 
Two angels are the first to acknowledge her pain. They ask, why are you weeping? Seemingly blinded by her tears, Mary does not hesitate to answer the angels, not showing the fear so characteristic of other angelic visitations in the Gospels, and unbothered by their sudden appearance and presence in what was before them an empty tomb. Mary simply answered, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have taken him. She is so blinded by the events that she doesn't have fear for them. She doesn't have anguish that is brought on by their very presence. She's almost depressed, almost in a way of sorrow that is so deep that it doesn't matter. And we don't know what happened to them, but then she kind of glances over and she sees Jesus a few verses later and she looks at him and he can't be told, seen by her. He can't be revealed for whatever reason. And he asks the same question, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? And Mary looked at Jesus and not recognizing him, but supposing him to be the gardener, said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. Mary is blinded by her grief. Mary is blinded by her sorrow. Mary is blinded by her pain. When Jesus says her name, she has new joy. She has new confidence. Oh, what joy. Oh, what love. And she just grabs hold of Jesus. Mary's physical reaction to clinging to Jesus is entirely understandable, and it emphasizes the corporal reality of Jesus, that Jesus is bodily raised from the dead. Jesus, though, tells Mary at this point not to remain with him. She can't follow him quite yet. Instead, now is the time to go and tell the good news of Jesus' resurrection, Mary, in full obedience, does just that. In many ways, we can relate to Mary. There's been a big, long time of sorrow. This COVID-19 thing has people on edge, people who are in absolute pain and sorrow and grief. We have all experienced that pain of Good Friday together, and now we meet the resurrected Jesus, and we begin to dare to rejoice. Jesus also tells us we cannot remain in the garden, clinging to him. He even comes to grace church. No, instead we must continue to trust his word, Go. While we cannot be with Jesus physically just yet, we rejoice and experience his presence by the means of grace revealed by the breath of the Holy Spirit into our very lives, who breathes over us as a community newly founded in the grace that we so desperately need, blessed by believing even outside. Let us rejoice in the new life we have to share with others. Let us have our eyes open. Let us see Jesus. In a few minutes, we will hear the bells playing, open our eyes. I thought it was a rock song at first, one that I enjoy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. But it's open my eyes 
the old gospel version, the old good news version that centers around today's text, where Mary can't see, where maybe we can't see, but when Jesus opens our eyes. Why? Because Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
be known to us, O Lord, as you were made known to the disciples. Receive these gifts and the offering of our lives, that we may be your risen body in the world. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And also with you. Peace. 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 Peace, peace everyone. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! The blessing of the Lord Almighty, the blessing of Christ, the Lamb who was slain, and the blessing of the Holy Spirit of truth be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.